Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. Breaking news for you at this hour. Wadena police are now investigating a body found inside the Wadena County Fairgrounds. Police were called to the fairgrounds Thursday evening on reports of something found that was concerning. When they arrived, they found a deceased male inside a ticket booth. The body was sent to the medical examiner's office for an autopsy. No foul play is suspected at this time. More information will be released after they notify family. Very passionate about barbecue. Um, the man never stopped going. Whatever he was doing, he was doing it at 100 miles per hour all the time. Um, and he was very motivated to, uh, he really wanted the food truck world to prevail here. We now know the name of the victim in a shooting that happened early this morning in North Fargo. Police say 38-year-old Jason Halverson died following an incident on the 600 block of 4th Street North just before 2 this morning. Two suspects have been arrested in connection with the death. 19-year-old Kareem Bird and 30-year-old Charles Harris III are facing an intentional murder charge. We talked with a man who lives in the area today, and he says he was within feet of the gunfire last night when he was out walking his dog. But when I turn around, they was watching me. And then I saw them run over there, and that's when I heard the gunshots, and I saw people running, and my neighbor, I saw him run, and he fall, he fell, and he said, somebody help me, somebody help me. And when I went over there, he was just laying face down. Police tell us a motive is not known at this time. This is a developing story, so we'll continue to bring you the latest around this murder investigation. Police are investigating several reports of shots fired in or near a Grand Forks apartment complex. Calls came in around 10.30 last night from people in the 4200 block of 5th Avenue North, but officers could not find any evidence of anyone who was hurt or any property damaged from gunfire. They're asking anyone with information about a shooting to contact Grand Forks police. It's one of those days where you need to keep the water handy and head inside where it's cool as much as you can. It's, uh, while it's hot right now, there is a shot of cooler air headed our way in the coming days. And Hutch is keeping an eye on some stormy conditions. He's here now with your no wait weather. Hutch. Andrea, thanks so much. As we take a look from our Storm Team SkyCam network from our studios here in South Fargo, right toward the Fargo Dome. A lot of rib festers out there. And well, I'm going to tell you, there is a pulled pork sandwich alert with gusts over 40 miles per hour at times, your pulled pork sandwich may disappear. Here's a look at the latest wind gusts of over 40 miles per hour in Fargo and uh, still near 40 miles per hour across much of eastern North Dakota. The heat is on and it's on for the rest of the evening and into the early hours tomorrow. We're tracking a few weak thunderstorms right now near the international border. So your forecast for Fargo this evening, hot and gusty and dry, but in Grand Forks, there'll be a chance for some nighttime thunder. Some of those storms could be strong to severe. I'll have details on the timing of those storms we're expecting to develop out west here in just a few more moments. All right, thanks, Hutch. An 11-year-old boy is dead after drowning in a backyard pool last night. Police say the call came in around 11 p.m. to the 1500 block of 5th Avenue South, but they say it is an active investigation and declined to provide more details. The victim's mother asked us not to show the family's home or the backyard. A neighbor says she used to love seeing the boy out and about with his siblings. These three kids down the street, they were always out riding bike, playing together. You could see they were best friends. We spoke with a home improvement expert about technology that parents with pools can buy to keep kids safe. You can find that, informa that information on our website by clicking on this story. A man accused of attempted murder and two counts of aggravated assault had his case continued today because the results of mental health evaluations are not ready yet. 31-year-old Jason Benefiel is scheduled to be back in Southeast District Court July 24th. He's accused of choking and striking an employee of the North Dakota State Hospital on March 29th. The $200,000 cash bond is still in place. Benefiel remains in custody at the Stutzman County Correctional Center. It's time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say 29-year-old Nicholas Bengal is wanted for burglary, theft of property, and unlawful possession of a firearm. You can call your local law enforcement if you have any information on him. Authorities have arrested a man with three active warrants who failed to register as an offender. 
Police say observant people around the area called authorities after watching Valley News Live this morning and recognizing Charles Rodriguez. The concerned citizens say Rodriguez was walking down a highway. He has been arrested and police thank the community for their help. We also have new information on the man who police say pulled a pistol on a taxi driver in Grand Forks. Authorities arrested 25-year-old Nikes Adjobi as the suspect in the case. It happened this past Wednesday when police got a call about a taxi driver who said he was hit in the face with a revolver by someone who called for a ride. Adjobi is now facing charges of robbery and aggravated assault. Temps are on the rise this time of year, and so are car break-ins and thefts. Fargo police officer Jessica Schindeldecker says these types of crimes are happening all over the city and have increased by 20 percent since last year. Not just happening in one particular area of the city. And what's really common with a majority, a vast majority of these thefts is that there are common factors of they were unlocked and or running with the keys in it. So it, these are crimes of opportunity. These are 100 percent preventable thefts. Schindeldecker says to be diligent and make sure to lock your cars and remove the keys. She also says there is no such thing as running in quickly while leaving your car running. Despite new security features, Memory Fireworks was targeted by thieves for the second year in a row. This time, the store's Frontier location was hit. One of their trailers was broken into and between 100 and 150 cases of fireworks were stolen. Memory Fireworks says the loss does not affect their supply and that plenty of fireworks are still available. But the loss is frustrating after someone stole $40,000 worth of inventory last year. We uh, purchased these massive locks that go on the trailer. So this wasn't an easy smash and grab kind of thing. They, it was well planned and they had to use some good uh, torches or something to get through them. Now staff say they are planning to add even more security features to keep the stores safe. A rate hike in Horace is creating a backlash against its elected leaders. This month, city water customers received their first bill under the new payment plan, and many were shocked to see what they owed. Now some of that anger is being directed at city staff. Valley News Team's Veronica Marshall speaks with residents about their concerns and with city leaders about why the change was necessary. The rates uh, that we were charging were actually not only low, but the lowest in the state, which is a problem because the city was losing money delivering, in water, delivering water and sewer services for residents. It was a long time coming, but shocking nonetheless. This week, Horace residents received their first water bills under a new payment plan that dramatically increased their rates. City staff say the change was necessary to balance Horace's budget and meet residents' needs. City leaders say while the bills may be a painful surprise for some residents, they're Horace's first step towards better water quality. We want to improve the water quality uh, because I, I hear that all the time. I hear residents, you know, upset about their water and I'm right there with them. But that end doesn't justify the means for some residents. While I was talking to Schmidt, one resident came up and confronted him. I've not had enough of it. Everything that these people are doing to us, I'm tired of it. Our water bills have tremendously went up. My water bill went from $60 a month to $93 a month. Iverson says he isn't the only one with complaints. I was over at the city hall two days ago. The phone didn't quit ringing because people were mad. Two of my friends come over to my house and they were talking about how much their water bills went up. A lot of people are not happy of what is going on. City staff say they're ready to work with residents to make the transition easier. But for some, that's just not enough. Come in, let's talk to us. Let's figure out how we can make this work for you. For how this city is going, maybe it's time for me to sell my house in the next two or three years and move on. In Horace, Veronica Marshall, Valley News Live. City leaders say there may be another rate hike in the future as well. Schmidt says the current rate will help balance the budget, but it won't build a financial buffer for future infrastructure projects. If a new rate hike is put in place, the city will be able to save money for future projects, so it will not have to enact special assessments. Later on Valley News Live at 6, there's a new program that's going to expand and strengthen North Dakota's Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. High temperatures today very close to records up and down the Red River Valley. Wind gusts over 50 miles per hour today for some. The wind continues and so does the heat. 
but storm chances are on the rise. I'll have details on when you can expect them next.